Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play Nintendo 64 games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention before we get too far into today's video, you will already need to have both Dev Mode and RetroArch installed on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. I won't be showing you that in today's video, however, I will be leaving a card on screen and a link in the description down below to my previous video, where I show you step by step how to do all of those things. It's super easy to do, all you need to do is watch those first, get everything done, and then come back here. And then we're going to be going down the process of playing N64 games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. So what we're going to need from this point is both an external drive, either an external hard drive or a USB stick, anything that we can put games on and then move to our Xbox, and we're going to need to have our games. Now I will mention in today's video, I'm not going to be showing you where to download games. Games are super easy to find, a quick Google search will help you out, or you can feel free to make a dump or backup of any existing games that you have. Again, I won't be showing you that in today's video, however, I'll leave some links in the description down below to help you out with that. From this point, what we're going to need to do is have our games. Now if you've downloaded your games like me, they will most likely come in a .zip file, however, they can also come in a .7zip or a .rar format. If they come in a .7zip or a .rar format, you will need either RINRAR or 7zip to extract it, however, if it comes in the .zip file, you can extract this directly inside Windows or inside your Mac without any issues. To extract this file, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be right clicking, we're going to be clicking extract all, we're then going to be extracting your extract location, simply click extract, and just like that our game will be extracted. We'll then see it here as a .z64 file, and that's exactly what we're looking for for RetroArch. We're then going to be taking this file and we're going to be bringing it over to RetroArch. So from this point, once you have your games downloaded without any problems, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing our external drive, we're going to be bringing it over to our Xbox. Series S or Xbox Series X, and we're going to be continuing from there. So once you're over on your Xbox and you've plugged in your drive, if this is your first time plugging in your drive, you might get this pop-up asking if you'd like to use it for Xbox game storage or media storage. It's really important here that you select media storage so we can add whatever files we want on here. Otherwise, if you select game storage, it will fully wipe your drive and only allow you to install Xbox games on this. So it's important that you make sure this is entered correctly. From this point, I'm simply going to be starting from my dev mode. What I'm going to be doing is launching my RetroArch from here, and then it should open up. Once your RetroArch is fully loaded up, what we're going to be doing is coming to our home screen right here. We're going to be coming to the first main menu tab here at the moment. And then we're going to be selecting the load core option here at the very top. Once this opens up, we're going to be scrolling all the way down until we see Nintendo. And we're going to be looking for Nintendo 64. In this case, we only have one core option here, which is Mupin 64 Plus. What we need to do from this point is simply click A. And then we're going to be loading this core. You can see on the bottom left, Mupin 64 Plus is now shown up here. From this point, we're then going to be locating to where our games are downloaded. So I'm going to be clicking down one. I'm going to be coming to load content. And then we're going to be after locating to where our games are. So for me, I have to scroll down here and they're currently in my F drive. Now at the moment, my hard drive is partitioned, so it'll split here across for me, across my F and my E drive. However, if your drive is not partitioned, it will most likely show up in your E drive. So this is something to keep in mind. You may have to check between these two drives. So for me, I have my Pokemon Stadium 2 game in a .c64 format right here. What I'm going to be doing is clicking the A button to load this up, and then it will take a couple seconds. We will get this black screen, and eventually our game will load up. Now, just like that, my game is loading. I've had no issues with this core whatsoever. It actually works really flawlessly for the few games that I have tried and I'm really happy overall with the visual quality as well. Now from this point I can actually play totally normally. Everything works really fine from here. However, if you would like to open up your menu and change some things, what you can do is open up your menu command right now. For me, it's down in select, but you'll have to enter whatever you entered for yourself. We will then here have all of our different controls. We can resume or start and a bunch of different RetroArch specific cores. However, what we can do is come down here to the options tab and here we'll get some core specific options that we can play around with for our Nintendo 64. There's a couple things I will go through. However, there's a lot of options here. For me, I had no real issues with this game, but I'll go through a couple of the key ones. One of the first two that I would recommend taking a look at is the aspect ratio. So for here, you can have a 4x3 resolution or a 16x9 resolution. And below this, we can actually choose the aspect ratio that we want to play in. So at the moment, it is set to 4x3. However, if you would like to set it by 16x9, you can do that here as well. Those are a couple of the main things I could recommend suggesting around with. However, you can scroll down through here and you can see a bunch of different things that you can play around with. So for the most part, I didn't actually have any issues while using this core whatsoever. So there's not a lot I would recommend playing around with. However, these are things you can check out if you want to play around with them. Now, one extra thing I would also recommend doing is creating a game playlist. As you can see, I have an example of one right here for my SNES. You can see it will actually give you this nice list of all your games, so you don't have to manually look for them every time.
time. You can automatically attach a core to all of your games. So for N64, this is less valuable. However, it is still nice to have. And you can see they even give this nice little icon on the left of the cartridge, which I think is a really nice thing as well. What I'm going to be doing is leaving a card on screen and a link again in the description down below to my previous video where I show you how to set up a game playlist. If you're going to be using RetroArch a lot and have a lot of games, this is something I would definitely recommend and will make a huge difference for setting up and playing games. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to play Nintendo 64 games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and the next time as always, keep it saucy, peace.